How many years have you owned Bandit? How I've many never years? owned one. We never owned one. I okay. Just, All right. So you you never ran and a season. Out on me, so I, I got you. I went and All right. been pestering them for two months. Okay. What's your uh, familiarity with it? Have you seen one run? Have you? I've I had never seen one. one. That's the first time I ever saw one. Okay. All right. All righty. So actually, the first time I saw one was when y'all loaded that 100 yesterday. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, that just kind of helps me. I don't want to okay. say stuff you already know. I don't want to. You know what You're I'm saying? If yeah. you guys are like well seasoned, I'll start with more advanced stuff. But I need 101. The the Bandit is a super simple machine. Like it looks. There's a lot of moving parts. The purpose, you know, Baylor's all covered up with um, covers and things like that where you don't see the moving parts, where we wanted it to be open so that if you saw something going wrong, you could actually stop and catch it before anything, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so what we do is we, we isolate it to inputs and outputs. The machine asks for something. Once it receives that information, it asks for something else. And so your biggest um, hurdle or learning curve to this machine is knowing um, how the machine thinks. And so um, your front electrical box here, you've got your, your banding box electrical box and your front uh, electrical box. And these boards are identical. Um, the only difference is they, when we program, we program with two different programs, a master and a slave. And so if there is a component that gets burnt out or there's just some tech support that we want to do as far as to isolate the issue, I can tell you to pull this board out, stick it up there, and take that board, put it here, flip a few switches, and that now becomes the slave, and this becomes the new master. And so there's inputs on this and outputs on this that are not used up there and vice versa. So Sometimes, if we have issues in the field, I can just have you swap the board and you'll be back going again. Do you do any, uh, do you do any diagnostic from a computer or strictly swapping boards? Um, so, for tech support, say you have the machine go down, your first thing is the monitor. The monitor is going to ask, waiting on strap guard arms to be at bottom position, waiting on carrier read switch to be on. It's just going to say things like that. We don't throw an error code up there and say, see dealer. We give you the information of what the machine is looking for. You call us up, first thing I'm going to ask, what does the monitor say? And then from there, I'm going to ask, where's the kicker? Where's the vertical plunger? And I'm going to, I'm going to know what that machine is thinking and be able to isolate that within a matter of, um, if you give me good information like that, with a matter of less than a couple minutes. I can have something isolated in order to be start stepping through the process. Of, of what's going on. So um, take a look over here. You've got red lights, which is your inputs. That is the information that is the machine is telling the computer. Okay? So if I have a kicker extended, I've got a magnet in front of a read switch. That's going to send that signal to uh, input seven. It's an input. It's coming to the actual board. And the light's going to be on. So I can, I, will you call, call me up and say, hey, I got an issue. We get a little bit more in depth. I'm going to ask you what your red and green light's on. I might have uh, red 2, red 7, red 10, red 12. Automatically, I know, okay, this is in this position, this is in this position. I know where the machine is at. Now I want to know what is the machine thinking. So the red light 7 could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. It all depends on the situation. You see what I'm saying? One, one more question, then I'll be up. No, no, it's good. Okay, this is a 200. Mm -hmm. We got a 100. Mm -hmm. Are we still talking about the same boards? You're talking about the same boards. Um, now, there was a 500 boards. There's a six, there's 501, 502, 603, 608, 609. Okay, those are like, that's all the boards inclusive of every, those are the different version numbers. So if it's brought up to date, it'll have probably the 608 boards on that. Um, so everything, when you're in the 600, uh, board range, um, everything's the same. There might be a few like switches or something like that. It's a little different, but as far as the mindset and how you go about the red and green lights and how to understand the machine, it is all the same. Um, and actually, you can check right here. This is the version number of the board. This is a 609. Oh, okay. okay. And then this is the program that was installed onto it. Okay. Which all that information is not necessary. Um, unless I'm just down in the details and I'm tech supporting it and I'm just trying 
to find out so weird stuff. On you this know what I'm particular saying? model here, that board and those versions are somewhere else in another. Yeah, second box. Where yeah, I'll show you. Anyway, I'm just Go ahead and hop up there. Oh, okay. Okay. Same, and now who was that other number at? You, oh, there it is right there. Uh, you want to hop up here real quick? I'm going to show them something. When you pointed up, I, I thought, where? <laughs> okay, so this board is held on by the four screws, okay? So whenever, um, if I ever say swap out boards or pull a board out or whatever, it's literally these four screws, okay? You take off the, you uh, loosen up the screws on each side of these plugs. You've got these three plugs, okay? And then you have power and ground coming in. You, if you pull the power and ground, pull these three plugs, that whole unit comes out. And I mean, you literally can switch a board out in a matter of five minutes. Did, when you take these screws loose, does this whole thing come nope. up? Or does nope, the wires just, come out? This is the only thing that you'll actually have to unwire okay. is the power and ground. That's it. We want a good, it, solid connection there um, because there's more voltage going through that than any one of these. And uh, we, the threshold rating on that was a little closer, so we was like, no, we're going to make sure there's good, solid connection with that. So all these we've never had an issue with. Um, these are the beefier plugs and everything like that as well. So, so you just take the screw loose and that comes straight up? Yep, this screw and this screw, this whole thing will unplug. Okay. All right. You can't get it all backwards then? Nope, these are everything different sizes is, yep, and this is different size. Yep. And it's just those three? Just these three plugs, these two screws, and then take those four out. Okay. Where do these go? I can't see. I can't um, get my head over they, they just, they wire into here. These are just wires. Oh, okay. You, you, see, yeah. you see there's some more right down there. No, I didn't. This is just the oh, wires yeah. coming into the yeah, harness. Is all. Yeah. Um, but anyway. So, you guys don't know what the red and green lights mean. Right? I mean, there's no way, and even, even to this day, I still double check myself of what each one means. Right. Uh, so and so green lights too. There's green lights as well. Okay. Oh, I see them. I didn't see those. Yep. So, so the green lights are the outputs. This is what the computer is telling the machine to do. Okay. So if I know if I have a green light five on, I know my strap guide arms, and I don't even remember if it's going up or down. It's going down. I know my strap guide arms are energized on the coil in order to send that strap guide arm down. Okay. Now, if my strap guard arms are down, I know it missed a connection as far as it didn't read an input. If my strap guard arms aren't down, I know that either there's blockage or there's an issue between my board to my coil, whether it be a loose wire or anything. So you call me up and say, hey, waiting on strap guard arms to be at bottom position, or bail position three. I'll ask you, where's the strap guard arms? Oh, they're all the way down. I know that either a magnet came out, I mean, I can, I can tech that thing within just a few minutes and have everything isolated down. So we, once you learn these things, there's a lot of these older Bail Bandit customers that's been with us for a few years, I don't ever hear from them ever again. They call me up and say, oh, I need this and this part. Okay, what's going on? Oh, this and this happened, but you know, I've already got it figured out, we're good to go. This was just a little specialty part that I couldn't go get at Napa. Hmm. Another thing with this, your bearings, your bolts, everything that is possible to be standardized, we standardize it. And if you call us up, hey, I need the SAE number on this bearing. We'll give you the SAE number, you go to NAP and pick it up. That way you can, you can be back in the field immediately. Um, this, this company started out, um, we had a manufacturing company build the machines for us, and they was like, okay, what do you want as far as specialty parts? And he was like, what? You know, specialty parts to help with, you know, keep your um, cash flow up on selling parts and all that. And he's like, I'm offended. I'm a farmer. <laughs> yeah. I'm offended. Don't, don't do that. And so we went all standard. We have all that information available. Okay. If, if we have to build a step bolt, we will. And then we can we sell that. But uh, anything at all, SAE numbers can get you back going. Um, so inputs, outputs. I can't stress this enough. If the machine stops, look at your monitor. I did tech support for quite a while. Nobody knows what the monitor says. I can't help you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the iPad, it'll tell you yes. what you're saying. It'll say, you know, Yes, so, so, you, so you with the iPad, and you actually have the box. Is that that little box that the, gave me Yes. Um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I just put it in the truck. I didn't okay. even know what it was. That is going to be your lifeline. 
it's either I can run a machine with just coming over here and looking at the uh, red and green lights, but it's slower. I got to unscrew it, and it takes me a little bit to figure it out. The monitor is going to tell you exactly what it's looking for, right? That's going to be your lifeline with everything. That, okay. That box is about this big. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. It's got lights on it. What's I hear? It I has a little screen. That yeah. Does it really? Just got a little screen on it. Okay. Does yep. that one be connected to the iPad? Uh, no. Um, no. 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 We have iPads in all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, we tried to get that retrofitted, but it's just, it wasn't going, That's fine. yeah. But anyway, so your, your monitor is going to be your lifeline. It is going to save you so much hassle. And then with, with understanding how the machine thinks, um, I've had so many people call me up and be like, oh, I got an issue with the horizontal plunger. It's not working. And yes, that's the next step. But anytime you see an issue, whether it be vertical plunger or the horizontal plunger, and it's just stopped because the machine will not move forward until it is satisfied with the position of each individual component. Okay, and it it, it sees it, and it, it you know it moves fast, but it will not move forward, so it doesn't tear itself up. So did I, that happen once in a while, or I mean, I know sensors go out and stuff yeah. like that, but. Generally, it ain't gonna get out of time or just have a no. Uh, no so not any false readings or anything like that, where you just reset it and then it goes back. Or the funny thing is, is most of it is operator error. Just learning the machine and knowing what it can and cannot do, how fast to push the bandit. You know what I'm saying? If you're running in a straw and you're able to just run, you know, you can bail straw and pump out bales left and right, especially if you get a real good dry day. Um, if you're running alfalfa and things like that where it's slower, that's just another issue that you don't have, you know what I'm saying, because you're just not going to catch the machine. So um, is, I, I know nothing about alfalfa uh -huh. other than it's a premium and mm -hmm. where we're at. Yeah. So like on the moisture, uh -huh. so you're, you're bailing to what you need for the baler mm -hmm. and the speed depends on what how wet it is, how mm -hmm. heavy it is. Is that what you would be watching for for this? Are you talking about moisture in the bundle? Or no, are you talking no, what about? What I'm saying is, in other words, straw don't weigh nothing. Uh -huh. And I'm assuming alfalfa or, or what we bail, mm -hmm. it, it can really get heavy mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's too much moisture. Yeah. So the heavier it is, the slower you go. So um, typically speaking, um, the bandit will keep up with whatever you're doing. With whatever, whatever you're doing. Okay. Um, when you start getting into the straw and the, the soft bales and things like that, um, to where you know some of those grasses are just spongy and just you can pump out the, the individual bales. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you try to get that bale length as short as possible and then just you're hammering it out. That's really the only time you've got to watch it. And so I just watch the, uh, um, the, the horizontal elevator here, and you'll start seeing, if you're really backing up, uh, you'll start seeing it push the bales forward. And the only, only time I kind of slow down is if I've got it jammed all the way from the baler all the way to the vertical elevator, and it's starting to push it up the vertical elevator, because I don't want that to shove in for in. That only takes it when it tells it to take it. Absolutely. Because that 100, I saw him, it would, it would just stop mm -hmm. every now and then, and then it would take off, and absolutely, he would pull bales up to it, and it would just stop. And it would, I mean, it, he couldn't force feed his. I know that. Yeah. So he was on picking the them up on your off bales. Them. Yes, the, they're all standard. I mean, what's the actual? So we length? recommend somewhere around 37 to 42. Yeah. That's okay. The um, with the model 200 and with the bale adjuster, you can go down to the 35. Um, if you want to take but you it completely. Can't get much lower because your elevator going up, right? But well, too short, they're going to try to drop out the that, box. that's not the issue so much. Uh, whenever the bundle was designed and the machine was designed, um, some of even the competitors, they've got the shorter bales, but the length of your bale is the width of your bundle. And when you start getting narrow, you start having unsturdy bundles and they start tipping over and the, the name goes down right. because the package yeah. is no good and that's why we stay with steel straps we have compression grooves we compress under 33,000 pounds of pressure we have those standards that we will not deviate from because it'll make us it, yeah. it, 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 it it'll it'll appease a few right. and make the whole thing look bad um, so the you start getting we won't go under 35 inches 
it and just won't let it. The strap tension you were talking about, that's all preset. You don't ever have to mess with yep. that. It's yep. all good. It Actually, um, we, the way we set the tension of the strap is we can press it to the size we want. We tie the strap and then we let the hay expand to it. So um, that compression, um, we, we adjust that size. We've got a, a valve up there that we can loosen and tighten. And so whenever the horizontal plunger compresses, it has a relief valve allowing the back gates to adjust to the size that we want on that. It's based off of pressure. So it should never be too loose or spongy mm -hmm. or yeah. unless your hay's trash. <laughs> 30 pound bales or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was wondering. What is 65, 70 pound bales? What you? I've got guys running 40 pound straw bale. Well, okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> but yeah, I've had them run way lighter than 40 pound straw bales. Um, but yeah, if you're figuring, hey, 40, 50 pound bales. I got people doing it all day long. Density is probably what matters more than anything, then. If just yeah, the pack, it as long as they're solid enough. Right to, as long as your string's not coming off the corners, um, you can have actually pretty flexible bales and it'll still take it. Um, when they start getting super trashy, you might have a little issues here and there, but for the most part, I've seen some trashy bales go in there, and whenever that vertical plunger will close over and that horizontal plunger, it'll actually form that bale where it needs to go to slip it in. So yeah, it is pretty forgiving. It, it's gone. It in if there. it makes it to bail position three, if it's together enough to make it to bail position three, it's going in there and you got a nice package. Yeah. <laughs> you still got the problem when they break it loose on the other end and it all just kind of flows out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So we had talked a little bit about uh, feeding the bales in. The separation, you can't feed it, and so I want to walk through how the photo eyes work, how to adjust them, things like that. Before you do that, I want to just ask one question that's yeah. sort of, when we leave here, mm -hmm. is there some kind of package that we need to have on, on hand? Do we need to have some sensors, or I don't know what we might need to have. We don't have a recommended package okay. for that. Um, you asking me that, I would say... Um, yeah, if you had a photo eye on hand and a read switch on hand. Not a whole lot of stuff, in other words. Yeah, I mean, your wear strip's going to last you 40,000 bales on the Model 100. Your wear strip's on the 200. As long as you keep them adjusted, you're looking at almost like a quarter of a million bales. Um, on, as long as you keep them adjusted, you know what I'm saying? Um, but with that... Are a lot of the switches the same? From yes, one position to the as, other. as much as possible. Okay. Um, there's only two types of coils on the machine. Um, all the reed switches are exactly the same, and then you get the photo eyes. So they're different, they're different link cords, but yeah. No, so is there adjustment on these reels on the, the brake? Yes, yes. You, know, so you got the on. springs back here. Yeah. Um, you pretty much, uh, when you set a new spool strapping on it, you got the most weight. Um, I would pay attention to that first bundle. Whenever, um, whenever bail, bail three of that first bundle of the first one off the spool, okay? When bail three goes in, when that horizontal plunger pushes it back, at that moment in time it pulls the most strapping off it's going to pull out at one given time. And whenever it does that, it's going to spin these things and as long as, I mean, it's going to loop a little bit, but as long as that loop is manageable and it's not going to come off the spool, you're good. And at that point, it's just going to get softer and softer and softer until it's time over. So there is some adjustment to that, but once you look at it that first time, you're good to go. You're just saying make sure the brake is sufficient enough to... To hold it that yeah, first few times. No, no matter what. Yes. Not, okay. And what you're talking about manageable is it don't put off so much that it flips off. Exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah, because then it's a mess when they come on spool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the guy over at Springfield against my knowing. Yeah. Tom Eldridge. He's I've heard the name. Yeah. Yep. I wish I had that. Name. Yeah, it's all right. I'll just go ahead and partially thread it here. It's all good. Okay, so uh, I don't want to really get into the threading at this point, but uh, I will tell you a story about it since we're, we're talking about the spools. Um, I had a guy come in for a seminar. I'm the one that trained him, okay? Went through this, the training seminar, finished up. I showed him how to thread the machine. 
Uh, and uh, whenever it was all said and done, I had threaded the machine. It was ready to go out the door. He calls me up two weeks later and he says, I threw two bales in and it stopped. And I'm like, sounds like it's mistied. You misthreaded. Did you, uh, sorry about that. Uh, did you, uh, rethread it? Nope. Just like you did it. I'm like, okay. Well, I've made mistakes before, so let's just work through this again. And I stepped him all the way through it. Yep. Yep. This died. It's all perfect, right? Okay. Let's try this. So we did a few things. Same thing. Same thing. Like, he was getting mad at me. Like, <laughs> he was getting pretty ticked. And I said, take a picture of the machine. And they had misthreaded right here on both sides. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I can mess up once. I, <laughs> I didn't mess up both sides. Yeah. And so um, when we go through the threading, just be very acute to how all that's going. Because, yeah, w once you get it down, it's just like doing it in your sleep. But, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> what do you get out of a spool then as far as bundles? Uh, 122 bundles. Yep. Now, um, there, here's, there's a little bit of variance here between the 200 and the 100. Your iPad, um, you can actually go into the settings and adjust the presets on it. You can say, I want every time I hit reset bundle, it to go to 126 bundles or 122 or, you know. Um, I have never found a spool strapping that has gone under 122 bundles. It's always like somewhere between 8 to 10 more than that but we just sell it as 122 bundles and then so you can go in there and you can set the preset and whenever it hits bail, bail zero on that the machine will stop and it'll say reset strapping hmm. and so um, that another 10 or 12 yeah it's not like a bailer where you're just like crap <laughs> and you have to go back and bail your uh, non-tied bales up um, so it'll stop um, now if you hit reset bundle and you keep bailing you forget it's not going to know to stop. Right. You know what I'm saying? It does it all based off bail count. Um, now, um, on that preset, you can adjust it. If it goes bail zero and you look, oh, I got a few more wines on it. I can just you can just add a few if you want. Yeah. On the model 100, you, when you you have to climb up into the box, hit reset bundle, and then just watch it. You know what I'm saying? If you know you've got just a couple bundles left on that, and then whenever you peel it off, just hit reset bundle again or reset strapping. I'm sorry. Manual, they have to go set it somewhere. Not you can't do it off that monitor. Right. Right. No, yeah. not on that because you put it on the iPad. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Right? Yeah. I just wanted you to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You, you're, you, there's going to be a pop quiz after this, right? <laughs> I know. He's going to ask me. Yeah. <laughs> Those aren't full spools. Mm -mm. Are they? No. Nope. So, um, okay. Photo ice. So when the bail comes in, now on your Model 100, there's just going to be one photo ice. Okay. The reason we extended this was because um, when we sell the machine, we state that it, um, a Model 200 will take a bail every uh, five seconds. Okay? That is through the tie cycle. That is the slowest point and the, the quickest point all put together. So if you, if you poke out a bail every five seconds, you will never have to wait on the bandit if everything's working like it's supposed to. Okay? On Model 100, I think it's six and a half seconds. Something like that. Um, and I don't know if that's with the update flow control, but anyway, six and a half seconds. We'll just, we'll just simplify it. So with that, uh, and there's other things we changed on that to, to cut that timing down. On this photo right here, you've got two lights, right? And as you put your hand in front of it, you'll be able to see that light turn on and off, okay? And that's just another thing was whenever, if you ever have any tech support or something like that, you can put your hand in front of it and see if it's actually working and if it's correlating with the actual light in the, uh, um, the electrical box. You How know many photo lights are on here? Uh, on Model 200, there are five. And they're all the same? They're all the same. Um, is there a link difference on the photo eyes? Uh, there are some different cord links. There's, There's cord, cord links. links. Yeah. Now, a lot lights up in there when you do that? Mm -hmm. Every time. Every time. So, yep. on every one of them. You could yep. do that in front of it. Would a different light light up every time you did that? Uh, well, for, for a different location? Well, it depends on the location. Like, so these three photo eyes are all run in series. So you put your hand in any of them and that one particular light comes on. Light. That is the only thing that happens. That's the only one that happens on the whole machine. Every other sensor is separated 
by um so if it's working you hit that a green light comes on. red it's an oh, input red light. okay okay it's red an input. input green is output back out. yep okay okay i'll have to write that down every number. yep for sure uh, yeah like like ben was saying on this uh, this is going to be your bible this sticker and that sticker okay uh, and there's one up on the banding box electrical box as well okay you, okay. This is going to be your Bible. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's, you can't figure out with the monitor. Um, I'm going to be, you call me up and ask me a bunch of questions. This is pretty much what I'm going to be reading to you. Okay. Is that the same one in the one up there? It's, it, it's a different stick. It's I, for, it's, but it's for that. Yes. It's box. for that okay. particular box. Right. So, um, this is the manifold right here. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, that's another thing I want to get into um, once we hit, well, let's just go ahead and hit it. I'll hit the photo ice later. Um, so on top of that manifold, you've got directional valves, okay? Some of them are just two positions. Some of them are three position directional valves. Any of them with one plug on them is just a two directional, right? Um, spring brings it one way, and the coil brings it the other way, okay? Are okay. you guys familiar with how uh, directional valves work? Uh, Kinda. Okay, so whenever a coil is energized, magnetize it, it'll pull that valve one direction and allow oil to flow. Through one port. Through one port. And then you go the other way and goes to another port. Well, as soon as the electric goes off of it, it goes the other direction the because point. of the spring. It's spring powered. And it just closed that one. Well, it not necessarily closed, but go a different direction. Yeah, like you see what I'm saying? Oh. Okay. Yeah, okay. so it's mainly on the cylinders, whatever. Uh, your motors are going to be more of your three way. You've got one direction, a back direction, and then the center point where that spring isolates it too. So anytime you've got one plug, you know it's a two-directional valve. Okay. okay, it goes either one way or the other. And then over there, you can see, well, oh, I see the two plugs. You see how this one's got two plugs yeah. on it? Yeah. yeah. That's okay. for your strap guard arms because you want the strap guard arms to be able to go up, down, and then hold in the middle. Okay. So right here, you've got horizontal plunger. Okay, this is number four. You see the number four on it? So the numbers on the cores correlate with the numbers here. Okay? And in some cases, um, and I think actually, I don't want to tell you wrong because I've seen every other. <laughs> I'm going to forget half this anyhow. Okay. As bad as I don't want to, I'm going to. So four, okay? Input four is red four. Okay, so you've got four, four, and four. Okay. Okay, that is all that one circuit. So whenever we go tech in this, you know circuit number four is a horizontal plunger. Okay, you don't have to worry about five or six or anything like that. Um, and so, okay, say, actually, I take that back. Inputs are not Yes. Um, What's that? Inputs and outputs don't usually match numbers. This is true. This is true. Um, so, and I actually pointed out the wrong one. Um, when green light four comes on, am I getting that right? Uh, horizontal plunger, solenoid. Okay, I'm right on that one. Um, green light four, whenever that light comes on, I know that I have power to this coil. Okay? Whenever the light is on, I know that there's electricity flowing through that circuit, and then I'll have power to this coil. Now, at that point, I can look and see that the energized state, the one that has power, that horizontal plunger, is going to be pushed back. So this horizontal plunger is extended right now. If I was to plug it in, I'm going to know that green light 4 is coming on because it's the energized states. And so that means that should be in one position every time. Yep. When it's so, energized, the, that valve opens it to that point. And it, mm -hmm. So, so yeah. anytime you have these lights on, this is what the computer is telling the machine to do. And if it's not doing it, then there's something from that point on. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. I, I can isolate the location pretty easily, yeah. very quickly. If it's not on, it's not getting power. Right, it would be from there back. Be from back. Well, well I mean, um, we're not. looking at the input side. So if it's saying, 
um, waiting on horizontal plunger read switch to be on. You, you see, this right here, I, I want you to understand how the machine thinks with mm -hmm. inputs and outputs. I don't expect you to memorize it. Yeah. Um, wh where, you're, where you guys are going to come in is looking at the monitor. And the monitor is going to tell you everything you need to know as far as where to start. And at that point, what is keeping, if it's waiting for horizontal plunger read switch to be on, what is keeping it from happening? You look at the step prior to that and saying, why wasn't it able to get there? You, you keep saying a read switch. I don't know what a read switch is. Uh, right here. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Yep. So when a magnet goes in front of a read switch. So it's um, not a R-E-E-D, it's R-E-A-D. It's reading it. Uh, it actually is the other. It's is it? Okay. But it still means. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, um, you know, sometimes they go faulty, but those are super easy to uh, the check. So there's, you know, we really don't have a lot of issues with our read switches and our photo eyes and things like that. Just like any other electrical component, they do eventually go out sometimes, but. It looks like it's um, adjusted too. It has mm -hmm. to, I, I see there's a, a tolerance there of, I don't know, a quarter inch or so, or eight uh, Three eighths, actually. Three eighths? Yep, okay. three eighths. But does, uh, uh, one of the eyes is, uh, is it susceptible to moisture, dirt, um, I mean, if you leave it outside through the winter and things like that, you're probably going to have a, a read switch or a photo eye or something like that that it's needs. It's dirty and it won't read. I mean, it... um, well, as far as just cleanliness, as far as reading, they do pretty good. I've had cases where oils will get on them or things like that, and then it collects dust and you just wipe them off. Um, that's what, that's reads, what I was read switches, you don't have to have an issue because it's magnetic, it's not vision. You know what I'm saying? The, yeah, the photo eye actually that. puts out something and, and reads that back. That's good. We um, don't leave our equipment out, but mm -hmm. I was just curious about just, we're in a dirty part of the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the blues. You're, yeah. you're in a hay field. Uh, <laughs> would it be better to get a tarp? And... If, if you can just set it under a barn or overhang or something like oh, that where it's not, yeah. yeah. It's too much money set out there. Yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. So, um, but yes, this is going to be your Bible whenever it comes to understanding how the machine is thinking. And all the rest is simple. I mean, it receives an input, it gives it an output, it performs a task, it gives electric to a directional valve, that coil energizes, it shifts it, it does it, it sees it, it disengages it, it opens back up, it asks for the next one. Each step. It just goes from one step to the other to the other. Sometimes, in a few instances, once it reaches this step, it does two steps. But very rarely does that do that, and it just it just goes from one step to the next, and it flows. So anywhere that it does not read or understand the next step, it'll stop and be like, I need this. It's not going to sit there and tear itself up or anything like that. So does it have resets just to reset it? That's where you come in, huh? We call okay. Like that okay. So, water 100, 200, doesn't matter. There's a box up in the thing. It says reset strapping, reset bundle, and it's got a toggle switch on it. Right next to the electrical box, setting off to the side. I beg of you, don't hit reset bundle, except for very specific times, okay? You call me up and be like, hey, this didn't work, this didn't work, but I cleaned it out. Did you hit reset bundle? Yeah. Bail until it gets in the failed state, because I can't help you. Yeah. Once you hit that reset bundle, everything clears. It goes back and it says photo one ready on a bail. You just, you just erased all the information, because it's no longer waiting for that input or output. It's waiting on a bail to come in the front door. So you got to make so, a fail again. You got to make a fail again. Well, it's one thing to do, but here's the thing. <coughs> if it's not in a failed state when you call me, I can give you ideas. Yeah. But when it's in the failed state, I need to, you know, I'm going to be asking you specific questions at that current position because I've had guys, well, I did this and this. Well, that don't help me out a bit. You know, I have to have it in the failed state, and it just makes it so much simpler. Right. I, I'm going to go back to what you said that these guys, after a short period of time, they knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. So when this thing fails, rather than reset, that's when we call reset. 
mm -hmm. and you until we learn why mm -hmm. it did that yeah. and then is that when these guys start not calling you learning so much they, they're when, learning. The, they'll literally they'll look at that and there's just a few things that they've come accustomed to and uh, once they understand how it thinks we, it, yeah. it opens up Pandora's box of when other things happen you're like you know what I'm saying? It, it isolates certain sections of the machine. What's your biggest call, like on these 200? What is your biggest, the most common thing that you, is there anything in particular, <laughs> or is it just operator error? error? Which is the most operator <laughs> error? <laughs> I don't know. Um, they come up with all kinds of fun things to call me with. Um, so there's nothing you know one thing that you can say to watch for. You know I've had people call me up and say, Well my horizontal chain's not working. What does the monitor say? Well, I don't know. Well, look for me. It says photo three waiting on the bail. Okay, you got chaff in front of photo two. I'm like, well, how'd you know that? Well, because photo two got tripped prematurely and um, it stopped the chain before the bale could ever make it up there. And so, it's like, over there. yeah, so, so when, and we was talking about photo eyes earlier about it, how it separates the bales. And if I'm jumping around too much, I'm just trying to answer the questions as they, as they kind of come. But uh, so, how the machine thinks is, Photo one ready on a bale. Okay, nothing's tripped, nothing's asking for anything. Photo one? All photo one. one. Okay. Yeah, all these are run in sequence. Oh, where okay. you have one photo eye, we have three here. Where is it? Here or there? Okay. Um, it should be at the very beginning of the, okay. it should be right here. Um, and the reason why is we want, with this being storage, we didn't want a bale stick right here and it slowed the process down because it's not processing it because you haven't bailed the next bale to push it to this photo eye. So we wanted to make sure that there was no empty spaces yeah. in between. That's why we ran all three and then ran them in series. And that other one's short, so with it being in the middle... You're not going to have go. two bales. It's either going to take the bale or it's not going to take the bale. I got yeah. you. Uh, so photo one ready on a bale. Okay, that's nothing. It is ready for a bale, mm -hmm. right? There's no process needs to happen. Right. When it trips photo one, both chains come on, right? And it runs and it fills it up until it's in the vertical position to where the second photo eye, photo two, all three of those are photo one, right. okay? Right. The second photo eye is photo two. And that's it right there. Yep, that's it right here, okay? Is that yep. the same on the 100? All the photo eyes are the same, yep. I know, I mean, it's in that position. It's in that position, yes. Uh, I just, uh, this is about reset. So mm -hmm. we're down. Mm -hmm. What is the, and I realize y'all have regular business hours. Mm -hmm. So under normal circumstances, we call and you'll call us back, or how does that normally work? Um, so if there's not someone to answer, leave a message, give a kind of a brief uh, what's it about type deal. Um, sometimes we have tech support after hours. Um, this particular time frame, well, I'm not sure yeah. where at, but typically we'll have people after hours to answer phone calls, okay? Um, a lot of times, um, especially if we have already a working relationship with you, and when I say that, you've called at eight o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the evening during business hours, you've gotten someone and that person that is helping you, um, sometimes, depending on what their situation is, they can carry that on after hours. You know what I'm saying? Because it, you, you know, don't call for a specific person, you just call. You call and you get tech support. Is there a number for tech support or do you call here? You call here and we, we uh, uh, okay. connect you to them. But anyway, so once photo two gets tripped, it separates the bail by shutting off the chain. So if you have chaff hanging over it, and as soon as photo one gets tripped, there's a delay to make sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to, and um, it'll actually stop that bail and be like, there's already a bail there. Right. So that, you was asking what the number one thing is. So should a guy every day maybe walk by here and just take it, a rag or something, just bump it, you know, wash it and just... It's not a huge deal. I mean, I'm talking over hundreds of machines right. and I, you know, we get the phone calls. So, so. just maybe if you had a broke bail or something or just something fell yeah, that's, and gotten away. You know, um, 
if you do get a broke bale or something like that, just as long as you get the big chunks and everything kind of cleaned off, it's, it's not too bad. So once it sees photo two, photo one stops, it goes ahead and sends that bale on over. Um, when the bale falls in front of photo three, which is up in the manning box, right. you might as, might as well hop up there. I'll, um, So photo three is right here, okay? And it's shooting through the hole here. Um, once it sees photo three, uh, the kicker will kick over, centering the bale. It'll kick it all the way over, so wherever you have this set, or, uh, you know, e even... On a Model 100, they don't have these, but the kicker will kick it all the way over. Um, once that kicker kicks over, Vertical plunger will tip over, and both the vertical plunger and the strap guard arms will go down. The, the 100 don't have what? That this this piece. adjustable piece right here. Um, we can sell you this piece if you want to cut the slots and whatever and put it in. But uh, what's, what's your length of bales? Whatever we, I can set it wherever we need it. So I'm okay. All right. This is only for people that really want that that have to have that 35 inch okay. bale. You know what I'm saying? No. I'm gonna go probably 38. That's perfect. That's actually right in the middle of the range and you're good to go. So uh, when the kicker kicks it over, vertical plunger closes and both the vertical plunger and the strap guard arm go down. Okay. Uh, vertical plunger where's, comes... Where's the strap guard arms? This is the strap guard arms right here. Okay, so that's you see the straps this will run through it, right? I can scoot over here. Well, let me just... No, no, I hate to do that. Here, um, and I can we hop up on top of... On yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not, not doing that. So, so the these are the strap cut arms, okay? And see how they're running on that carriage right yes, there? Yes. Okay, now yours is gonna look a little different. It's got different types of wear strips on it, but it has the same purpose. Still gonna have, see that roller out there on the front? Uh -huh. um, so the strapping runs in the strap cut arm. Where is this, where is this uh, wear strip you're talking about? Um, I mean, can I see it? it just well, it? so this is the strap cut arm carriage. Okay, mm -hmm. this is, that's what actually runs it. So there's a wear strip here, there's a wear strip here, there's a wear strip inside. Uh, so and yours is gonna look different And it's this. gonna be replaced every 40,000 bells? Um, Are we talking about these bells or? Individual, individual bells, individual bells. That looks like a hell of a lot of work. <laughs> well, um, on the ones on yours, they're actually just two pieces and they're C pieces. And you just take the bolts out, drive one down, put the new one in, drive the other one down, is put the new one in. Is this a neoprene or something? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, um, can you see, but them? see? This is the strap gut arm carriage. Okay. So when I talk to strap gut arms, I'm talking this whole unit right here. Okay. okay? Um, and I'll show you the strapping actually runs through the tubing, and that's what carries the strapping up and down. Okay. And it also carries the bales up and down. So whenever a bale comes over here, it just doesn't fall to the floor, and they actually carry the bales down. And then also the strap guard arms act as compression grooves. So whenever that, whenever that third bale comes in, you got three bales stacked on top of each other. You got the compression grooves of the vertical plunger and you've got the strap guard arms which act as the compression grooves. And when the strap guard arms go to the floor and the vertical plunger presses down, it compresses, it doesn't cut. It compresses the hay right where that strapping lays and then it slides it back on the rails. And you'll see the rails in the right. back of the chamber. Right. Yeah. And so that makes that extra dense right where that strapping lays, okay? And you said the wear, is that these uh, the, nylon looking? Yeah, so you've got the nylon bolts here, and yes. then you've got the metal bolts here with uh, nylon inserts, okay? Oh, okay. And uh, if you adjust those, um, well, okay, so the strap gut arms, they are very forgiving. Um, on the Model 200. We've opened up some tolerances and things like that. Um, and so those, those plastics, if they're adjusted pretty decent, um, they'll, I mean, they'll last you a crazy amount of bales. Can I ask you a safety question? Yeah. Uh, where he's standing, yeah. straight down, there was, looked like an emergency stop button. Mm -hmm. When you're coming up here, do you need to, what do you need to do before you crawl okay. up here and you're in the field? You never touch the machine unless the hydraulics are off on the tractor. Okay. Okay. I mean, the e-stop is 
is fine. You push the e-stop every time you get, okay, if something goes wrong, you kill the hydroxyl in the tractor, you come out and you hit the e-stop. And that locks everything in place. It locks everything in place. There's actually a couple fail safes with the e-stop, but things fail. Okay. It don't, we can it, throw. The stop don't erase our reset. No, no, it does not erase any information that is of the machine. Nothing like that. But we put fail safes in the e-stop to just double check, make sure so it's the de-energized state of the solenoid to make sure everything gets locked down, all that kind of stuff. But I'm telling you, things fail. <laughs> don't touch the machine unless the hydraulics are off even, of the tractor. Even with that Boost, that um, so with the nitro boost, I want to walk you through that one. This is unhooked here. No, that's the light. Yeah, uh, we'll hook that up before I leave. But during the seminar, man, that thing is so annoying. Whew. Okay, so uh, take a gander down here real quick. So this right here shuts off the machine, right? This acts as an e-stop for the nitro boost. So bang, bang, yes. and bang. Three One seconds. more. If you look underneath here, yeah, see the... I saw those valves earlier. So yep. those valves are if you're going to crack a hose, okay? Right. Uh, if you're going to... That ball valve is the safest valve you can have, and those are right at the accumulators. You shut those off. Um, Bleed a line somewhere, you know, uh, cycle your uh, uh, neutral on your hydraulics, right. unplug and plug in your tractor. That helps shift everything yeah. to just let everything bleed out. You're safe to crawl around, do whatever. Yeah. Um, but make sure that this is in the off position for any normal things. But if you do any work on it at all, you want to shut those off because so, it is stored energy. Right. And we, we want to make sure that you're completely safe. But if I do the hydraulics, do that and that, then I'm safe to pulled broken bail out of the cylinder yes. or just anything. Yep. I mean, nothing's yep. going to... Nope. It's all good there. But uh, if you crack a hose, yeah. you have to make that's, sure those... for pressure. Yes. Under, yeah. And that's then when you do that, just make sure that you cycle a couple things to relieve the pressure. You, otherwise, you're going to get that spurt in the face. Right. Right. Yeah. But uh, yours doesn't have a nitro boost on it, correct? No. No. Okay. No, I think the wrong. I had that added to it. I don't know. I just don't. I'm 70-something years old, and I brought all this with me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But anyway. Um, we'll look at that. I don't know yeah. if we do or not. And now, I'm going to, like, uh, can you check for me to see if they've got an Atribus on their machine out there? Okay. Um, yeah, he, he had something because his tractor wasn't big enough. Okay, that sounds about right. That sounds about right. To change the flow. You know? Okay. Oh, he's checking on that in front of the restroom. Yes, uh, second door on the right. There, go out the door. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll wait on the nitro boost part of things until, until we find out for sure because uh, um, uh, what tractor do you put yours on? I've got a 135 Kubota, and okay. it's only got like 18, 19. Okay. What's the horse on that? 135. Oh, okay. It just doesn't have the... Doesn't have the... Doesn't have the oomph. Yeah. Uh, none of the Kubotas do that I looked at. I've been on. I've been. I'm going to get another tractor too. Just doesn't to have the nitro boost. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, say this. Does or don't? He says it does not. Um, so I'll go ahead and say this um, because I mean it doesn't really affect him at this point. When you go hooking up your tractor, um, we're going to need to know what the psi is of your pump, what it deadhead pressures at, right? I can get on data. Well. That is different than what the actual pump is producing, right? Um, and to get the most out of your nitro boost and everything like that, um, we're, we'd like 3,000 psi. Some of them are 2850. Yeah, it's like 2850. Okay. Um, data. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Um, and people don't like doing this as far as like uh, um, dealers and whatnot, but you can turn those pumps up. Um, even a gear pump. There is still a valve in there that you can adjust and, and turn those up. Uh, whether you get them to do it or not, that's a different story. Yeah, if well. you can't get them to do it, have them give me a call and I'll talk them into it. Okay. Um, but uh, what that'll do, 2850 is fine. We'll just have to adjust um, this uh, um, reed right here. I, the words lost me of what it's actually called, but uh, the dial. 
um, and we can adjust. So what it does is it, on, there's, there's piston pumps and gear pumps, right? right? Piston pumps is a displacement pump, whatever it needs or it stops, right? It'll only pump what it needs. With a gear pump, every revolution is pumping its max capacity and all the extra is getting blown over a relief valve, which causes heat. Right. So that is one of the big issues with the Bandit is it'll take five gallon a minute or it'll take 25 gallon a minute and it's either running too slow or it's blowing over the relief valve and it causes your oil to get too hot right. and yeah. So with the Nitro Boost and, uh, uh, well, I won't go into that, but with the Nitro Boost, it'll take all or none. And so if you've got an 18 gallon a minute tractor and you put it on a rake that runs 12 gallon a minute, you're having that six gallon a minute run relief over. Right. The Bandit will actually, with the Nitro Boost, run the oil cooler than a rake. Hmm. Because you have inch lines running however many feet it is to your tractor and just sits there and it circulates it like a radiator right. until it needs it. And then right. when it needs it, it takes all of it and it fills up those accumulators. Right. So with that being said, it'll, it'll run super cool yeah. in comparison to, I mean, it's still going to run your 180 or whatever temperature your right. tractor cooling capacity will be. But With this on here, though, do I still need to have, hook the, find the, Look, the reserve yes. bill not just go straight yes. into in and out. We still want a zero pressure return. Okay. Um, but yeah, so what, whenever that, uh, that takes that oil, uh, what we don't want to do is blow over that relief valve. And so we set the pressure uh, 50 pounds below what your tractor will produce. You see what I'm saying? Can you pull up? My phone won't load. Can you pull up the Kubota? I mean, you... well, the thing I, is, is I think it said 2850. Yeah. The th the thing is, though, is you're going to actually have to check it because I don't care if you've got 15 Kubota tractors lined up with all the same model, everything. Yeah. Yeah. The valve is going to be set a little different. We're talking 50 pounds here. You know okay. what I'm saying? And then I can call you and you can tell me how to adjust that mm -hmm. if I need to. Or yep. It also it explains in the Nitro Boost manual. Yeah. So I'm getting a manual too. For, for mm -hmm. the both the nitro boost and for the machine. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. For sure. Pop, the yeah. really came up. So um, a little something that's different on the 200 than 100 is you've got this uh, uh, manual shifted out valve here. So say photo shoe got tripped or you have the busted bundle at the e-stop. You're over here. You're you're cleaning the uh, um, the hay out whatever, right? You're not in the machine, but you're here, mm -hmm. clean the hay out, whatever, cut the twines of, you say, one tie missed or whatever. And uh, you've got a uh, bale here, but photo two's already tripped because it chaff went everywhere and everything like that, right? Um, you can actually take that, uh, leave that bale there, and instead of baling and letting it push and push and push until it hits the chain to take it up, you can go over here and press this and it will momentarily, however long you have that down, will push, push that chain. Hmm. If okay. You bust the, if it busts the bale going up there, uh -huh. it's not counting that bale to go in. No. Right? No, it only counts the bale. But senses after it's... Yeah. So once it hits photo three, that's when it counts it. Yeah, it's Whether it's processed it or not, when it hits photo three, so, that is our surefire way. So when way. I get jacked up here with a broke bale, mm -hmm. I can just go ahead and out and throw another bale up and we're still on time, we're yep. still all good. For sure. Good. But so, if some of it blows over there, yep. then I gotta look and see if it's counted it on the monitor and then come back here and you know, three, six, nine, ten. Well, four. here's uh, the nice thing is, is you'll find out real quick uh, where the bundle's at. Um, Okay, so the problem is never three deep. You know what I'm saying? It's always you have an issue yeah. that stops. So you can look at the strap gut arms or you can see how many bales are in there. And if it says seven, I know there's uh, only one bale in that tier. Right. And if it says nine, right. then I know I got to get a bale in there before it pushes it back. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, only time I've ever really seen, um, and I've done it a couple times, um, only time I've ever really seen it get up there and bust is one, if it's just a super, super ratty bale and it was about to slip off anyway, or two, um, the bales are pretty much, you, you know how sometimes you bale and one string will miss, yeah, but the bale's pretty much yeah. still intact yeah. um, and you don't check it. It won't go, it won't feed up. A broken bale will not feed up into it, but if you keep baling and you shove it from the backside, yeah. 
it'll shoot up in there and when it goes over yeah it blows up it's it's lovely yeah. but uh it's just no it's gonna happen it's gonna happen <laughs> your door will and clean all the junk out and... yep you you open up that door i want to see hydraulics off e-stop right. off the works okay it's not worth it